nightmare. Hello and welcome to Cinema Subculture, the podcast where we discuss everything strange, obscure and downright messed up in the world of movies. My name's Gary. And I'm Simon. On this episode of Cinema Subculture, where we're going to be looking at The Machine Girl. Is this what episode is this? Oh yeah, this is like episode 16. 16, aye. See how I just knew that, Gary? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Directed by and written by Noburo Iguchi. Um... And it was released in the US and Japan in 2008. I think it was out here, 2009. Do you want to give us a bit of a synopsis, Gary? After our brother is killed by some local bullies, Amy sets out on a revenge mission to capture the perpetrators. Capture? I don't well, think so. Um, I think you're wrong. Unleash some terror. Holy terror, <laughs> yes. Um, Unholy terror. And in the process, she gets her arm amputated. Sorry, it gets a machine gun put on it. Oh, ah, you're giving away the spoilers? Aye. Then the title. <laughs> what? It's not. It's, it's the machine girl. It's not the machine gun arm wielding yeah. girl. You know it's coming. So uh, sure. I'm machine like. I guess if you've seen the cover. So, the quote from the front of the, the UK release is a film so incredibly outrageous that it couldn't po- possibly exist. Um, I'd say that's kind of fitting. With the 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 themes and um, imagery that we see, um, what was your thoughts, Gary, on this film? <clears throat> Easily, absolutely hated this film. You hated it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so sorry to say that. No, no, no it, it, it's, it's not. It's not my top ten. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Basically, oh, Gary just turned red. <laughs> you can't believe how angry he is. He hates it. My problem with this film, I guess, is basically takes its audience for granted straight away. I mean, I know it's meant to be fun yeah, and all that, but <laughs> the premise of this film is basically, you like exploitation films, you like violence and gore, we can do that, <laughs> you'll like this, <laughs> you must like this if you like that. <laughs> Say, no, no, no mate, I'm, I'm, I'm not playing the game here. Definitely. Oh man. <laughs> you you can't assume, never assume. It's basically just such cynical filmmaking for me. And I feel, I maybe develop this point later, but it doesn't respect its sources mm-hmm, definitely. for me. It's, it's as if it's, um, as you say, it's stealing from everything it can and mm. trying to get as many people to watch it. You know what I mean? Like yep. taking from as many, I mean, the, the directors from like a, well, AV, they call it adult video, I guess. So it's like porn he made before. He started making mainstream films. Um, and like, he's got everything in there. You know what I mean? Okay, there's no actual nudity or anything in it, but he's got all the kind of the themes. In fact, there's actually a few of his porn star actors that he used in his other films. And this film, obviously just there to kind of pull in the audience. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I'd, I'll totally admit that this was a, a blind buy for me. Right. I just thought it looked kind of like stupid title kind of thing. And I told you I actually got it for like, I think it was like eight, seven or eight pounds on Blu-ray when the, the when it just came out and the mm. DVD was still like maybe like fifteen or sixteen pounds. And I just thought, fuck it, you know, um, and I grabbed it and I, I'll I find this film kind of fun to watch, like funny, like uh, the amount of times I just can't believe what is happening, right? And can't believe, I'm think you know like a basic example is when she gets the is. The, gets her hand dipped into the batter and then gets it fried mm. and then all of a sudden she's up to the elbow and it looks like something from the sea right. it just makes no sense yeah um and some of the dialogue i just I, the the crazy parents like that the, you know the 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 parents who first visits to kind of ask the, the boy who was leader of the gang and stuff like that they just go mental on her and just start trying to kill her mm. like what's what's what, 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 what What's happening? <laughs> yeah, um, it just it, it 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 takes the piss in every every possible way. Mm. Um, but it definitely, I, I definitely see your point. What you're saying about like you like exploitation here's us blowing things up and yeah. people up. Um, and it's not even even if you take that for granted and you say okay that's fine. So that's the kind of quality of film it is. It's not even very well made. Like mm. you know. At least if it was well made, you could kind of say, "Okay, this is um, 
kind of skillfully made. You know, you could maybe yeah. give some sort of kind of redeeming feature to it, but the special effect, the CG is t- horrendous. Aye. You know what I mean? Right as you say in the first five minutes, there's a scene which actually doesn't work in the chronology of the film. Like, when does that take place? Oh, aye. <laughs> I remember thinking that, like, when I watched it the first time, I was waiting for that to kind of fit in. Right, aye. But it fits nowhere in the film, <laughs> you know. Um, and it's just, and and you say like just that point, and like she's spraying bullets and barely hitting anyone. And mm. but as I say, I, I I do find it amusing. Right. Um, just oh, I left a bad taste in my mouth because you've got completely overblown cinematography. Mm-hmm. You've got intentionally, from what I assume it is. Intentionally bad acting. Yeah, I, I've got to admit that the main actress, a uh, Amy, she 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 does. She quite valiantly pulls off some of the the cheesiest stuff I've ever seen in cinema. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? She she mm. she's um. She's the best of the cast, definitely, um, and from what I can gather, she was a. I can't remember the name for it in Japanese, but she's basically an, a lingerie model. Right. right, would bend nuts or something like that, right? Um, but she does all this kind of, which looks like most of her stunt work, you mm. know, whatever it is. So she 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 kind of she puts her kind of heart into it, if you know what I mean. But yeah, the rest of it's um, <sighs> you know, yeah, it's like oh my You've god, got, like actors... although that wee fucking smug wee bastard, that's the the, the wee boy that the the, the wee uh, the y- yakuza's son. Uh, I right. punch that wee fucker's face okay. out of the pulp. So he 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 can act alright. <laughs> yeah, I mean you've got scenes where it's just total mugging for the camera. Yeah, and it's there, like... there is a scene actually where the the the, the look at the, the the husband and wife that are making the machine gun look at the camera after they've finished. Yeah, it's like um, now you've got crazy use of like freeze frames and slow motion, like just total over the top. I mean the acting. Obviously, that's deliberate. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think so? It's not like it's a low-budget film. That's and and the CGI as well. I meant to yeah, bring think, up there, which deliberate? is yeah, because I think it's it's playing on it's it's basically expecting you to like it because it uses like the form and grammar of traditional exploitation, right? But the problem with that is it doesn't respect the source because. If somebody's making an exploitation film like in the 60s or 70s, they're not saying, right, we're making exploitation, so therefore we have to have a bad script and bad acting. They, yeah. though, they are products of the mode of production. Like, this is a point that um, Eric Schaefer makes in his book, uh, History of Exploitation Films. The budgets and the way the films are made so quickly determines the fact that they have to use, like, yeah. uh, it's a bad actors. script. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Actors just starting out. So therefore, those are secondary factors. But this was thinking, right, we're going to make an exploitation, so we'll make the, the acting specifically bad. And then people will say, oh, that looks like this, all the other films that I like. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. I never, I hadn't really thought about that. I right. mean, my first instinct was that, no, that, that this is totally, they're trying to play it as best they can. Mm. Um. It was totally contrived for me. Um, I don't know. Just, I can see. I can see where you're coming from. Right. I can see why. But again, that seems like almost too clever of an idea to try and do that. Like too much thought into it mm. to try and do that. I don't know. You know, because again, it's like they're using like, and I'm not. God, I'm not dissing porn stars at all, right? right. They have their, their purpose. You know what I'm saying, Gary? You know what mm. I'm saying, Gary? Gary knows what I'm saying. Um, but they're using like. Like you know, adult film uh, actors mm. in main roles mm. to really you saying you saying that they're saying act bad, act worse. Yeah, yeah. and it's to do the it's edited so they'll specifically okay. put a shot in of a close up. Yeah, guy okay. Funny face. Well, I, I, I would grant right. you that the, the editing. Yeah, I get right. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. that's intentional by the director. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Again, I think that's coming from the kind of trying to make it kind of. Tongue and cheeky, you know. Yeah, that's and... the thing. It's trying to be kind of really funny, but also kind of ironic. It's like um, mm-hmm. playing with exploitation form. I mean, it's not just this film because there's other films recently that have done the same thing, mm-hmm. like uh, Piranha 3D. Yes, which is interesting. Like, it seems to be. Did you see Piranha 3D? 
I didn't see the whole movie, right. but I got the gist of it. Yeah. It's almost a parody of a parody. Working That's so it. far down the rabbit hole, you kind of forget where the source came from. It's but, like, it's a parody trying to play straight, almost, isn't it? It's like, because it's, it's obviously a remake, pseudo remake of Piranha, right? Mm. But then you have the fact that it's, it's trying to be an 80s film. Because mm. it's, it's kind of, you know, playing up to those kind of stereotypes of an 80s film. Yeah. Um, and then there's some there's very, some very like like wild over the top characters in it. Yeah. But then you get the main characters playing it straight, so it's not quite like your kind of scary movie, mm. but everyone's kind of playing it mm. like wacky. Yeah. You know. Um. But it's 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 almost like a kind of third generation yeah. parody. Yeah. Yeah. Because you get Jaws, and then Piranha was kind of a rip yeah. off of yeah, Jaws. Yeah. 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 But even that has some integrity yeah. to it. I think you've got Joe Dante. Yeah. Um. But then with Piranha. 3D, it's coming, it's playing on a tongue in cheek expectation from mm-hmm. the audience, mm-hmm. and it just leaves itself in a total vacuum for me. There's nothing and in that film. It's not helped by the, the 3D factor, because mm. I mean, you know, that's the only reason that film was remade. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you kind of get the, the fact that that's like most of the gags, you know, quotation marks in that mm. film. Could only have been done in three D. There was only the only reason to do them is because they're in three D. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but no, I, I take your meaning though. But that this feels like a kind of it could fit in with the kind of not that I've seen this film, but what was it, Lesbian Vampire Hunters? That oh, right. Was released, you know, or like the scary movie type parody of of films without actually, you know, um, name checking films. This could kind of fit in with that, I guess. But, I mean, those aren't very good either, so, mm. <laughs> you know. Other films that do that would be probably Grind, uh, the Grindhouse films, Death Proof and Planet oh, Terror. Yes. Uh-huh. I haven't seen Planet Terror, so I can't really compare yeah. it to that. But I think the difference maybe with uh, Death Proof, have you seen that? Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is that although that's kind of uh, tone a similar line, I feel Tarantino, even though he's not really that original, in my opinion, He's coming from a much more sincere place. Mm-hmm. He's not really trying to rip off the films that he's referencing. He's just saying, I love these films. Yeah. You should love them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's more a kind of homage. It's a bit less, it's a bit more benign yeah. than what this film is to me. Mm-hmm. And then. Better made as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I haven't seen any of those films that came from the trailers, like Machete, Hobo with a Shotgun. I don't think. I don't know how they. Well, it was Hobo. Over the shotgun, was that? Was that, was that a so. Greenhouse trailer as well? I didn't. I, I knew right. Machete was. Um, apparently, Machete wasn't that great. They, okay. they are making a sequel to it. Yeah. Machete kills, but. All right. I um, don't know if I they end know. up in the same place as Piranha 3D or not. Um, oh, you mean a right eye? Uh, <clears throat> well, Machete was a character developed in the Spy Kids films. Was I? Did you know this? No. You know how Rodriguez did the Spy yeah, Kids yeah. films, right? You seen any of them? Uh, no. No. Really. It's like I don't know. I really like Robert Rodriguez, right? And but I don't know when he. I can't. I would never watch that. I've tried watching right. a wee bit, and it's just. I guess he made it for his kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they, that's what it is aimed at. You know. But anyway, their uncle is Machete Cortez, right? And it's played by what's his name? The guy that plays Machete. So then they spin him off into his own film, which is like a totally adult, like violent film. Mm. It just seems so weird, but it's the same guy meant to be, right? So, I don't know, it's a bit, you know, uh, weirdly meta, but mm. it's kind of, I don't know. But I, I think you're right, that does fit into the kind of, the, the same kind of thing. Um, I was kind of thinking, it's almost like an, an adult, adult, know, it's a, maybe not, a gorier version of, like, a Saturday morning cartoon show. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. with, with all the kind of big gestures and... Um, the dialogue even you know what mm. I mean some of the dialogue was just uh, horrendous well, there's a bit where um, like Amy's going to help her brother before he gets like killed and she knocks over the, the guy's drink or whatever right. and the three guys start to like try and like sexually assault her Aye. and then all, from nowhere she just hulks out knocks him off her and says you've pissed me off mm. it's just like did you notice like, everyone seems to hulk out at that point right. like, her brother like, goes mental and starts oh, punching yeah. that guy right. and the wee Takeshi Mm. Takes off his specs and actually mm. goes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was funny, <laughs> um, but just out of nowhere. Mm. What, what's the explanation for that? Mm. Um, 
but I mean, it's just it's some of it's horrendous, and the 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 acting, well, the delivery goes from like I think there's another bit at the end where she's basically like dead. She's been hurt quite bad before she takes on the the, the guy, the, the the father, and then when she, she kills him or when he gets killed. She turns, goes from being like this kind of, ah, you know, like, kind of, I will kill you, to being like, I know you would die. Right. <laughs> you know, kind of, you could only die. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you die before? <laughs> you might as well have died. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it was just, could you see like, any, like, I, I mean, I've never really watched many, any, like, samurai films or anything like that. Could you see any kind of things that were taken from that genre? I know there was some, you know, there was some light sprinklings of kind of that culture. Right, yeah. Into it. Um, one thing I can think of is, I mean, blood spotting quite aggressively everywhere. That's <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. that's maybe from um, Sanjuro Kurosawa's samurai film. Right, right. As a um, quite a famous scene where a guy gets. Uh, I mean, again, cut. like um, Tantino did that quite a bit in Kill Bill and yeah. things like that. Can I say I'm that familiar with like kung fu mm, exploitation no. type films? But that's got a lot of the stuff of like guys flying through the air, sure, hanging sure. in the air, uh, yeah, 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 for like ten seconds. Or like. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, there's a bit you were talking about bloodletting, like the bit where the, the the yakuza father just cuts his arm and like starts like making his son drink his blood. Like it just seemed to mm. go on for ages. Mm. Like is that like I think that's what you're, exactly what you're talking about when you're saying like just kind of aping the hell out of things. Yeah, you know. I mean, what was other kind of films like this? Like the Lady Snowblood. But that's not. I don't think it's a parody. And uh, no, just in terms of like the kind of revenge, female revenge flicks. Yeah, well, um, Lady Snowblood, and um, well, I guess Kill Bill was yeah. obviously like a kind of not a remake. It was an homage to that. Uh, um What else we got? Aliens. Right, let's <laughs> get back to that planet. She's like, I'm gonna fuck you up. That's it. Uh, what mm. else have we got? I don't know. Snow White too. Snow White too. I uh, see. It's fucking like, I'm gonna Are kill they? you, evil <laughs> queen woman. <laughs> don't like fucking apples. Uh, I spit in your grave, I guess, to some extent. Oh, sure, That's sure. Probably a rape revenge subgenre. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, um, definitely. So yeah, it's definitely kind of playing on. And that I'm sure there are far more, and there may even be more. I mean, what's that film? Is it Lady Vengeance? Oh yeah, <clears throat> Shamrock Park. Yes, I haven't really seen any of those films. No, oh, I hate the old boy. I've never, that... I hate the old uh, boy. I've never seen old boy, but right. But um, yeah, I th- I th- that from the title would imply female vengeance. Yes, of would... some sort. Um. So yeah, so it's obviously playing on those themes, and again, you've got the. To me, the, the biggest theme that's playing on is we'll get cute girls with a machine gun for a hand. Mm. That's pretty much it. Mm. Um, I mean, there were parallels, uh, like those. Uh, I think this was this was out after, or uh, um, drawn between Planet Terror mm. and this because of the the shotgun, uh, the machine gun for a leg, aye, in Planet Terror and things like that. Um, there's not much crossed over other than that I don't think right. in the actual story or anything like that and Planet Terror is far better made even uh, though it is made to look like a B movie you know what I mean it yeah, is yeah. It's very um, conscious of that mm-hmm. but as you say I think those they're a bit more honest with where they're coming yeah, from yeah. that's it's uh, the same with the with Kill Bill I know you, did, you weren't the biggest fan of that but to me that is what he's doing with that you know it's kind of like this is here's this film I've made He's very upfront with, here's my inspiration. You know, here's where I got like this from. Go and check it out. I think mm. these movies are awesome. Yeah, uh, as you say, it's not particularly original, although I mean, still his, his dialogue's always usually sharp. Um, but and he can pull, you know, he can pull it off. Yeah, stuff he does. But I get what you're saying. You know, it's very yeah. At least those films have like good characters. Yeah, you can relate to it. this film doesn't even try to endear its characters. It just assumes you're gonna yeah. be with them the whole way because it's this is fun. Hey. Mm. I mean, I, I, I said to you before that I think like um, the guy that plays Amy, the main character, mm. does kind of put her heart and soul into the what she's got. Right. You know, I, I think she pulls it off fairly convincingly. Most of it, as I say, she did, it looked like most of her own stunts 
you know, for what there was in it's quite a physical role. And as I said, she's basically is just like she she has basically come from a, a background in lingerie modelling. Mm. You know, something that had been like nuts or FHM. Mm. So you kinda she's fairly she's fairly believable Aye. in what what she's got to play with, if you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. What do you think of the, the finger eating sushi bit? Yeah, and it was it was played very Ah. Uh. I don't know. There was only one bit that I laughed. Right. What was? There was one funny line in it. Right. Not that section. No, no. Right, hit me. Right. Um, it's a scene where the other chick that, that Mickey. team up with, I, she's um, hammering nails into that guy's face. <coughs> right. <laughs> and what does he say? It's got a, just a funny turn of phrase. It goes, you nailed me. It's not fair to use a nail. <laughs> I literally wrote that down. I thought that was hilarious. It's like you know me. Is that because like he's totally like you can't do nothing to make me talk. There's nothing you can do. It's not fair to use a nail. <laughs> oh man. Um, but did you no, think? the rest of the abs. There's a few. I, I, I've me. got to admit, like I, I, I thought there was a lot of bits that made me chuckle. Um, nothing out that crazy, but. Um, <laughs> like there's a bit where um, when she's sitting at the table with the, the parents as I say that go to attack her and she says about going to the police mm. and the, the dad says we've been in the police business for a while now <laughs> it's, <just> so, <laughs> it's so fucking stupid what? yeah <laughs> um, and then they fucking go mental on her <laughs> the, the bit where she's spraying the son's blood into the dad after he's asked for conditioner mm. I just, it's just totally the, again it's like um, it really did make you, I suppose think about the, the way they filmed it but you know it's for, for laughs mm. but um, I thought it was quite funny and the the junior high shuriken gang right why, why were they attacking them mm. they didn't seem they didn't seem to have any affiliation mm. <laughs> and then like I thought the bit where she peeled they got this peeled skeleton guy I thought it was pretty funny right no just the, was, just the way it was wobbling about, I just thought that looks kind of funny. Uh, I can see again that it assumes you're going to like it. Yeah. Well, that was it, does, right. he, does he make you like it? He says, mm. this, is, this, is, this is crazy, batshit crazy, eh? I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't go too far to say I liked the film, but I, 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 thought, it, I thought it was uh, funny at bits. Right. Um, just it's like just the, the absurdness of it is like, all of a sudden, they've got all the parents of those like children together and they form the super mourner gang right it's mm. just like was that you know what why why you know no nothing nothing Gary nothing, no, nothing. Um, what did you think of the drill bra I see you're impressed mm. did you see it coming did no, you see it coming ah well that's good yeah. um, it annoyed you uh, I don't know. You. I don't know. I just can't. Kinda... I prefer soft bras. <laughs> <laughs> um, it just made me think about the the sexual politics of the film. Mm. In the sense, um, it's uh, on the face of it, you think, oh, empowered female lead, mm -hmm. progressive, yeah. but it's really just playing to the a teenage boy audience. I mean, why why is she still in her school um, uniform the whole time? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's. I mean, yeah, and to some extent, that's. Oh, history exploitation scanty clad women yes, but okay. um, uh -huh. this film seemed to premised on the fact that it might be a progressive film mm -hmm. but, yeah okay um, and it quite, had quite a lecturous tone in places I think yeah. maybe I've just been hypercritical of it because I didn't could... like it for the start <laughs> <laughs> where about you think it was um, just some of the it had a lot of kind of illusions like lesbian illusions you say, what did you say, lecturous? Aye. I thought you said lecturous. Oh, thought, right, no. As if it was preaching. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. Um, yeah, like with Amy's wee friend who ends up getting defiled after death. Yeah. <laughs> um, I th again, that like, that scene like just made me chuckle because like the guy just says, it's not often you get to do a schoolgirl. Uh, and, and then, but then you see the guys in the background and they're tapping down buckle their trousers and you see them kind of huddling as if they're like oh, right, what, 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 what are you going to do <laughs> yeah, it just looks so fucking stupid mm. um, so again I think in that way it kind of is trying to mm. uh, take the piss but yeah no I see what, you're, I see what yeah. you're meaning Um, some of the gore is pretty good mm -hmm. I guess uh... I thought that I wrote down like 
It's about the beginning where she kicks a pole that's in someone's mouth right through the back of his skull. Right. And I, I wrote, you know, it's in these kind of films, people seem to have like paper thin bodies. Like, right. you know, no substance to them. They can just mm. you can put your hand through them and stuff like that. But the the bit where she gets stabs, she stabs the mum of that we the, the, the first boys, the, the blood conditioner family. Right. She stabs the mum in the back of the head with a knife that comes out through her mouth. Right. There's a little just, that kind of reminded me of something from like uh, Fulci, kind of, mm. you know, the kind of intestines coming out. Yeah. Uh, big fun. Mm. That's vomit gore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, I remember being, and I was this time when I watched it, quite disappointed at the when she loses her arm. Right. Because she gets her fingers chopped off, and that's quite a cool. Well, it's a fairly cool scene, and she's obviously like as if they're going to torture her for a while. Yeah. And then that stupid bit trips him up, mm. and his blade just happens to cut her arm mm. off. It seems a bit pointless. Yeah. You know. Um. You think they could come up with a better way to do it than that? First time I watched it, I remember thinking it was her arm was going to get fried. Mm. You know when that happened, and then she was just going to cut it off herself or something. Right. Like that. There's a line near the beginning where um, she's talking to those bullies, and she says that she didn't used to be a murderer or something. Right. And then she says, "And I also used to be ho- able to hold my baby brothers in my left arm." <laughs> <laughs> it's just so it's like, <laughs> what? Awesome. Uh, I often enjoy holding my baby brother in my left arm. <laughs> I I sum, summarized no in, in summation. I concluded that it was stupid as hell, mm. but kind of funny. Um, something you could watch quite happily after a couple of beers, and just have it in the background. Right. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. I think that's the that I've watched it one more time than I thought I would right. <laughs> um, <laughs> watch it. So I got my eight pounds worth. Um, again, this was a while ago, you know, when Blu-rays were still 20 quid, so, you mm. know, it was a good price, that. Um, think you'll ever watch it again, Gary? I don't, and no, I can safely say we'll never watch it again. <laughs> but if, like, for the anniversary episode, I'll say we, we're going to watch a couple of films again. Oh, yeah. See if we've changed our minds on and mm. I, I pick this one. <laughs> um, maybe we'll have to watch it then. <laughs> They're going to say, oh, that's a fucking end of the podcast, isn't it? <laughs> well, at least I know you're open to things, man. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, uh, I should probably just have done this at the beginning of the episode in case anyone's a bit kind of pissed off. Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to see what Gary thought of this because we've done, you know, so many films we've, we've both liked or, you know, I've been in kind of sure and things like that. And um, I just wanted to file this on to you. Right. Can I also add the. In the UK anyway, even the Blu-ray looks shitty. Right. <laughs> it's not a very good <laughs> uh, Blu-ray at all. So maybe I didn't get my eight pounds worth. Um, is this is this the worst film you've ever seen? The worst film. Um, it's probably not the worst. It's definitely one of the most offensive and insulting. <laughs> uh, has no since I saw uh, James Cameron's Avatar. Have I been so? Uh, Wolf. That's controversial. Controversial. <clears throat> Never seen it myself. Uh, Nah, um, yeah, I felt it insulted my intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not the worst because it was intentional, I think. Right, okay. You know what I mean? Aye. So it's not quite it's so bad, it's good, it's just bad. Aye. But it was kind of meant to be bad, maybe. Mm-hmm. It's, it is, it's kind of weird, it's kind of weird because you get films that are just bad, right? Sure. Yeah, films are just give us an example of a film that's just bad maybe it wasn't intentionally made to be bad but it was just bad yeah. probably pick any of the well especially maybe the other first one first one's right the, the the scary movie oh yeah or like, you know disaster movie films that Aye. they're trying to be good Not, you know well, what I mean? well they're trying to be funny aren't they um <clears throat> I guess but they are trying to be funny Right. So in that way, mostly I would say they don't succeed. Mm. So that's a bad film. Uh, it's kind of the absolute bottom rung of the ladder right, in I terms of humour. So, humor. Um, so but, but point is, you get films that are set out with good intention but end uh, up bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you get films that are trying to be bad. 
no, you get films that are bad. <laughs> they're so bad that they're good. Something like um, Island of Death. Aye. Right, yeah. that's like, that was almost set out, that wasn't necessarily set out to be bad, mm-hmm. but it is bad, but it's Aye. so bad it's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of history of exploitation as well, isn't it? Yeah. You have to again making a sincere, making, yes, yes. expecting to make a good film. Mm-hmm. You're not playing on tropes of what's, what uh, is, is a, uh, This is a film that's intentionally trying to be bad. Yes. And still ends up bad. Mm. So it's going for the so bad it's good, but it gets the bad. Uh, um, because it's bad. <laughs> Leads on to another debate. That oh, does it, Gary? It was on uh, the podcast Battleship Pretension. Near original ideas, Gary. Near original um, ideas. Is, is Just came it, out your name. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> but they were kind of talking about, is it fair to hate a film? Is it, it, is was, it what? Fair to hate? Yeah. yeah. This is um, based on a conversation someone had with uh, Quentin uh-huh. Tarantino, who was saying... Basically, it's not worth hating a film because even if a film's really bad, there's something, there is some worth in it in the fact that you can learn what not to do. And he was saying he's learned more from uh, bad movies than from good. Sure. Well, I mean, something, um, again, like, mate, there is a link, honest. I'm not just bringing up <laughs> Kevin Smith for the sake of it. But, because um, Kevin Smith and Tarantino are, are fairly, cl- you know, acquaintances or whatever. Um, friends, one might even say. But he brought up the point as well, like, especially in later life, he finds it hard to hate or, like, diss a film, just straight out diss a film, because at the end of the day, you have to remember that there's been so many people worked on that mm. film mm-hmm. and they have put an effort into it, Yeah. however, you know what I mean? And it, it's not easy to make a film, you know what I mean? So you kind of have to give props that it's even made, however bad it is. Um, so I can kind of see that, but as you say, this you can kind of do that if, if the, if there's sincerity there and that they're, they're, they're setting out to do something, mm. and if it turns out bad, then you know, fair enough. I mean, I wouldn't say I hate this film, mm. but I don't. It's not, it's not one of my favourites. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> would you say you hate this film? I think yeah. I would say. You'd say you yeah. hate it. <laughs> you said you, see, you just made a point and you said you couldn't hate the film. You don't agree with that then. No, I don't say that I agreed with that. No, I'm just asking. Um, so you disagree? You think you can I think you films? can. Mm. Not for mm. only if, in cases like this, there is something brought in to mm-hmm. the... It's nothing to do with the actual medium, yes. necessarily. Yes. It's just the intention, the authorship of the film. Like, it's maybe fair to... If a film is racist, mm-hmm. it's maybe fair to hate Buffer Nation, for example, or yeah. Song of South. Yeah, uh-huh. Because they're not just about racism, they actually are racist. Right. Yeah. Uh, you seen it's on the South racist, eh? Essentially, because it says it kind of portrays slaves as being happy with their uh, wanting life. Right. <laughs> I'm a slave. It's cool. I'm just singing. That's <laughs> if I do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's all right. good. All right. Okay. Right. Um, how racist it is. I mean, sure. I've I've seen worse. I think arguably going with the wind is worse. And that's portrayal of uh, its slave yeah. characters. Um, but, um, yeah, I think in those grounds, it's fair to hate a film. Mm-hmm. I get you. Um, um, I mean, I still I still come at it, like, from the point that I think he was trying to do something funny. Mm-hmm. I just don't think he's been very skilled at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I mean... The, it apparently says, you know, the idea for the, the film came, it, it was a simple idea, he says. He had about a one-armed girl in a bikini looking for revenge. Right. So this guy like came from making like porn films, basically, mm. right? Um, and one of his kind of more notorious uh, porn films was called, and I'll read some of the names of it in a wee second, right? But this one was called, and I think this might be the, the best one ever, um, final pussy, yeah. Um, where the main actress basically played a uh, a character who, uh, as a result of a military experiment gone wrong, obviously, because who would want this? Has guns burst from her breasts when sexually aroused? Now the 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 effects, the makeup, the gore, and everything was done by the same guy that did the effects and stuff for a Machine Girl. Right. So to me, that's kind of where the birth of this film came from right 
that kind of thing. I don't know how much he'd done of that kind of thing previously. Um, certainly most of his adult films seem to be in the toilet obsessed area. Yeah. Um, I'll read some of the, the titles out, will I, Gary? If you want. I will, don't worry, I do. We go from everything from Pretty Wife 13, fairly that's right, you know, yeah, 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 to I Wanna Suck, to Waves Are Often Liable to Be Done Enema, Pink Pudding, <laughs> um, Rest Beautiful Young Lady Stools Lolita Lavatory, um, Enema Shame Zone 13, Beautiful Girl Excretion School, um, Japanese Beauty Girl plus Buckache Volume 2, uh, Beautiful Girl in the Toilet 2, Secret Exp- Excrement, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, younger Sister Really Lewd Speech Persecution, um, Celebrity Senorita Take Your Clothes Off, Everyone Makes Me in Ecstasy, First Come Inside, Excellent Pussy, you- <laughs> I mean, and finally, veterinary pet beauty big bust with cast teacher. Oh, and hypertrophy genitals girl. <laughs> I mean, what else is there to say? Mm. So, to me, I don't know if he's smart enough to do what you're saying. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Um,. I mean, his, his, his mainstream films haven't been much better, like, names-wise. I mean, recently he's done Zombie Ass right. and Dead Sushi. Mm. So, although the the film that he made after Machine Girl called Robo Geisha sounds pretty interesting. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, next time on Cinema Subculture. <laughs> anyway, I think we'll wrap it up on right. this. Um, yeah, I th- didn't really have much to say about that, unfortunately, for me. No, it, yeah, I think it, we still might nice to have a conversation about right, it. Uh, it's important to, I think it's important to point out the kind of the bad side of extreme cinema. Would you say this film is classed as extreme in its kind of content? Maybe. I mean, I mean, there's, there's is, extreme it, elements in. It seems uh, one of its mandates is how shocking can we be, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it is, it is it does succeed to some extent in that. I was like. That is, yeah, props, kind of, that is... Kind of shocking? Or... No, I wouldn't necessarily nah, shock, because the yeah, tone yeah. is kind of uh-huh. funny, but uh, it is no something, it's a cut above, it's definitely a cut above, like, the mainstream yeah, horror, yeah. what you might see in horror, but um, takes it to one notch up. But, um... Um, so I think it's important to, let's say, like, yeah, we're not, like... People might criticise us for watching extreme cinema. Right. Might criticise people, but the point is, we're not just gonna love everything that happens to have loads of gore in it, or mm. you know what I mean, questionable themes. Um, there's a a dark side to extreme cinema, <laughs> 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 um, <clears throat> and this may very well be it. This kind of thing. Um, here endeth the lesson. Right. <laughs> See how I made that seem like I did that intentionally. Got it. Um, would you not agree? It's it's kind of important to say that we're not. Ju- it's not just. You're not just gonna. We're not gore hounds necessarily, or um, you know, what I mean, we're not just no gonna accept anything. No, Th- for there me, has to be quality. Yeah, it's kind of how I, how I approach you on my film. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, uh, it's the quality of the film. I love horror, but I'm not a guy that is looking for the conventions mm-hmm. just to see it every time, time and time again. Of course. If it's not a d- good film in itself, then I'm not that bored. We are kind of uh, have some integrity in our yeah, film criticism. Yeah, 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 I think so. We're not just um, going to heap praise on stuff for the sake of it. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely the kind of extreme of the other side of the, the scale compared to some of the films we've done recently. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If you class them as... 10 out of 10, you know what I mean? This okay. is like the complete other other side. So, it's it's um, worth seeing if just to 
say don't watch it to other people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's about. I don't think there's much other merit in in it. Yeah, I don't know. It's an eighteen, isn't it? Aye. Aye. Uh, if you're over fifteen, I think. Uh, you're too too old for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There you go. Don't know what else to say, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm out as well. Yeah, don't don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> don't watch one of these porn movies, man. Um, You're probably better. Yeah, you see some tits in that. Yeah, um, that's nice. TNA. You know what I'm saying, Gary? TNA. That's mm-hmm. what I was missing for this film. See if it's some TNA in it. I wouldn't be sitting here, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be stuck with watching it. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Shall we move on? I believe there may be a wee surprise in store for our listeners. <clears throat> there, are, there is. Uh, for this next section. Um, what could it be? Well, I don't know, Gary. What could it be? Could it be <laughs> something that you might not be expecting? It's a little well, bit random. It is. It's something um, you were uh, busting my balls about right, it getting done. Stunning right on That's... them. Kind of just joking. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wish I'd said just joking afterwards. And, uh, all sorts of <clears> things. Yeah. Basically, Gary's come up with some some <laughs> uh, some um, theme music Aye. for the old uh, random shit. A jingle. A, j- a you jingle. You might even say a jingle. Um, so here goes. As we move into Random Shit. Random. Hello and welcome to Random Shit. Um, that was our new intro music. Mm-hmm. Um, be sure to hit us up on the email and let us know what you think of that. <laughs> 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 Gary's uh, staying with bated breath. Um, as usual, the email address is... Sorry, Gary, you want to say something? No. No? I'm good. So you're going to dive in there? No, no. All right. Um... Maybe in a moment Gary will tell us his inspiration for the tune, <laughs> right. um, which I thought was me after from another episode looked, um, but apparently no, it's a voice generator. The email address is cinema underscore subculture at hotmail.com. Um, the Facebook is facebook.com forward slash cinema subculture. Uh, be sure to give us a like and any feedback always welcomed, especially on this new theme tune music type thing. Um, Gary, where did you where did you come up with this? Um, and how long did it take you? It took me a whole ten minutes. Yep. Ten minutes? See, that's my genius, you know. Well, um, I've said it before, Gary, and I've said it <laughs> in the past. Don't know where it came from, really. Uh, I'll say it again. Um, you don't know where it came from? Somewhere deep. <clears throat> did it come from me saying, just loop me saying right. random shit? <laughs> Is that where it came from? It, it was meant as a, a partner piece to the, the intro music. Oh yeah, with a guitar. Aye, aye. I can yeah. hear that. Can you hear it? Yeah. I can. I'm not been too. You're looking at me as you're taking the fucking <laughs> yeah. pish. No, I swear to you. Um, I can hear it. Yeah, you can hear the kind of yep. in the back. Um, I think it works. Mm-hmm. I think. I think over time, Gary, it will become in the pantheons of of music a classic. <laughs> and um, when the 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 awards for a best classic. podcast music comes out, right. it will be a close second to the main cinema uh, subculture. At least among the cinema um, subculture themes, it's it's up there. It's definitely number two or yeah. one. Oof, yes. It's definitely one or two, man. <laughs> definitely. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go on record, as, you know, putting my eggs in one barrel, um, <laughs> as saying which of the one or two. Uh, maybe you would like to say that, but mm. um, yeah, it was good. So, what would end the, the day then, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, have we got run. some news? We can have if you want. Yep. You want to go? Okay, I'll go. Um, so I've but one solitary piece of news this week, Gary. Um, although to be fair, it's like mahoosive news mm. in the life of me, anyway. Yep. There's been one film, Gary, that I've wanted to see on the big screen since I was like, I'd say maybe like fourteen or fifteen. Um. And it slowly creeped its way into being at that time, and probably now, but definitely one of my favourite horror films ever. Um, Halloween, John Carpenter's Halloween, has been re-released 
to the big screen in the UK. I've known for a while they were doing a release in the States and we didn't think there was much chance it was coming to the UK, but it is indeed, um, and it's coming uh, courtesy of Showcase Cinemas. Um, there's a bunch of screens all over the, the UK. If you go to showcasecinemas.co.uk, you'll find it there. Um, I've booked my tickets. It's actually on in Halloween, mm. which is awesome because they seem to, like when they put it on TV around about Halloween, they never put it on oh, on hi. Halloween. It, or like, you know, like they've got... Hellraiser on on Halloween. Oh, what film will we put on in Halloween? What have we got? We've got Halloween or we've got Hellraiser. Yeah. Well, hmm, but hmm, that's Bobby, you know. And Bobby's like, oh, Hellraiser. Um, so it's actually on in Halloween, and your fine self is accompanying me, yes. Gary. Um, I've only seen the film once. Yeah, um, <clears throat> that was with me back in the day off a of VHS cup. I don't I, even think it was the v- I don't even think it was a widescreen. Really, yeah. I think that was back in the day when I thought you were losing picture for widescreen. Right. <laughs> um, watched it in a wee four three telly. Yeah. Remember. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be an interesting thing. Cause I've been wanting to get you to watch. I've got my Blu-ray, but I haven't. Fuck that. <laughs> I've seen the big screen. Uh, so this is kind of a bit of a big chunk of my lifetime ambition to go and see this film yeah. on the big screen. Uh, as I said, it's on my bucket list, so this is something finally ticked. It's the only thing that's on my bucket list. <laughs> it's the only thing I want to do for a day. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm psyched about this. Get your tickets if you want to see it. It's it's awesome. It's on, I see, a bunch of the, the showcase cinemas. We're going to the one in Paisley. If anyone wants to come and peep us, <laughs> we're at the half nine screening. If you if you if you, see, if you want to you know come along, um, get your pictures taken. It. I'll be wearing my Michael Myers co- yeah. Michael Myers costume. <laughs> uh, Gary will be going as uh, Sam Loomis, Doctor Loomis, obviously. Um, what she's shaving his hair for? Yep. Yeah. Um, and growing a beard. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, he's practicing his practicing his it's evil <laughs> speeches. Um. Yeah, so if you see us there, come and say hello. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. I know that was a big ramble of a pish type of news, but um, <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> um, and I'm happy about it, Gary. Right. So, yeah. Right, good one there. I hope you've got some news that will top that, Gary. Well, I, probably no, not. Bugger that, you'll never top it, Gary. I'm not even listening to your <laughs> news, I'm turning this off. That's the end, goodbye, welcome to... Mine's all in the world of Blu-ray. All right. Release news. Pfft, well, Blu-ray. actually, one, right, of them's, one's, one of them's a TV related item. Oh, really? It is. That's un- unusual, That's Gary. the first time. Eh? Aye, I don't like it. <laughs> right, so the Dark Knight Rises yes. Blu-rays was uh, announced mm-hmm. this past week there. Sure. Uh, a number of different versions available. Really? I, I didn't notice that. Have you seen that? Have you decided... <clears throat> What one you'll be? Well, it seems that I didn't think there was more right. than one version. Here's the options. Only, no, here's, here's the right, options. Okay, well, I only know two versions. One was the trilogy. Box, right, but, aye. Uh, okay, go for it. You've got your uh, standard Blu-ray. You've got your uh, trilogy. You've got um, Steelbook version. Where's what, he getting the Steelbook from? It's maybe an American one. I saw a Germany or, Steelbook maybe. one. You've got your Digibook. Nice. A Digibook? Yes. Oh, what, that's, a I think UK? that's a Target, maybe. All right. Mm-hmm. You've got your one that comes with a Bane figure. All right. Uh, you've got your cool edition. Sure, saw that one. Um, Did I actually see that one? And well, I was hoping for the trilogy. I was looking for that. Uh huh. Because I haven't got any other ones. Oh yeah. And I was thinking, I saw it, and it's like nice book comes with. Mm-hmm. I thought, all right, I'll get that. But on the wee uh, press release, it says at the bottom, Ultimate Collector's Edition coming in twenty thirteen. Oh no way! Which pissed me off a bit, to be uh, honest. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> why? And that's in the press release. Aye, I mean, I expect studios to continually release their big movies, mm-hmm. but to give you all these editions and then say, even if you buy this, there's another one coming. You have to buy it later on. Uh, that's a, pretty bad. It's a bit. That's that's good, isn't it? Aye, that really is. <laughs> I didn't. Need, as you say, but, um, so unfortunately, there's no. Um, we don't know what's going to be in that uh, ultimate collector's edition. So I don't know what to do. <clears throat> I'm just looking at the digi book. It looks pretty nice, but you know you don't have digi books with other ones. But I don't know. There is mm. an American steel book, apparently. Aye. Yeah. Um. And there's a the digi books target exclusive. Well, there's two digi books. Oh, aye. There's one, one with Batman, Batman and front and one with Bane. Yeah. That sucks. So the ultimate collector's edition is going to be a a trilogy. I would think so. But um, what else can they put in it? 
I mean, because well, it seems like they maxed thing, out the extras. Well, there's apparently a documentary, a trilogy documentary, but I thought that was going to be on the, just the, the, the Blu-ray. Right, so but, that just, what's that on? I think it might... Uh, it's been hinted that it might be like uh, just for the trilogy box. Right, right, right. But then there's no... No, nah, I think... I'm sure it was originally announced it was going to be on the Blu-ray. Okay. You know, there's a documentary, the trilogy documentary, and it would seem kind of silly to just put it on the trilogy. Ah. Uh. I don't know. <clears throat> you seen the artwork for the trilogy or for the UK one anyway? Yeah, meh. it's just it's just the same artwork they did for the Batman Begins Dark Knight re release they did the other steel book. Yeah, kind of boring. But I thought I guess the only thing they could really do is, and I don't really see it to be honest, would be either Nolan commentaries for the films. I doubt mm. I doubt that, or what a director's cut of the films. Right. Like apparently there's quite a bit of footage not in Dark Knight Rises. So I could see that happening. But other than that, I don't know. I think I'm um, I'll probably just buy the standard edition. Yeah. Blu ray. Um I quite like the, the steel book and I've got the steel book for the other two as well as standard edition Blu ray, so I'll see what happens with that. But it will take something hopefully there'll be something good in the ultimate edition to yeah. entice you in. Um, I don't know, hopefully it's not just like, I'm not interested in these backboard edition or cowl edition yeah, statue yeah, yeah. type things. Um, I'll pro- I might just go for the trilogy as it is. Mm. Um, I don't know. Depends how much it is. If it's, if it, you know, if it's if it's a decent price, they're not ripping you off too much for it, then I, if you've not got any of them, go for that, I think, mm. yeah. Because even, even if it comes to it and it is something amazing in the Ultimate Edition. Yeah. The term the the word collectors, yeah, is a nod towards something like a a statue type presentation or something. I would yeah. think. Okay, so Warner Brothers, I think it's our ninetieth anniversary next year. Right, they've announced a few titles coming out in Blu-ray. <laughs> Some titles I'm excited about. Um, three James Dean films. All right, finally coming to Blu-ray. Giant, uh, we both at a cause and East of Eden. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a, a collector's edition, eight disc or something. Oh really? All the like documentaries and stuff about James Dean. Oh shit. Eh, uh, so sounds quite good. Yeah. There's also a uh, the jazz singer is coming to Blurry. <clears throat> like that. Oh no, don't know what it is. It's um thought of as the first talkie. All oh, right. Even though it doesn't actually have any dialogue in it. Your first sound film was Don Juan. Okay. But that only had sound effects. Ah, and right. the jazz singer had, it was Al Jolson that was in it, and he sings in it, but the rest of the film's silent. Right, right. And also, they're doing a couple of gangster collections, four disc box sets. The second one is uh, some of the classic gangster films, uh, Public Enemies, uh, White Heat, um, Little Caesar, The Petrified <laughs> Forest. Sorry, was is Public Enemies? Is that like is the Christian Bale film a, a remake of that? Eh, uh, I think it's just the same title. Oh right, right. Was that Public Enemies? Did I, the first one was Public Enemy. Ah, sorry, right. Got you. I think sorry. I. It's a sequel. Sweet uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Uh, <laughs> From the horse's mouth. Okay, and yesterday that was Monday the eighth. Sure. You had your. Masters of Cinema titles oh, yeah. for January mm-hmm. and February 2013. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a couple I'm definitely picking up there. It was Fear and Desire. We yep. knew that was coming. Knew that was coming out, huh? Um, uh, Oni Baba mm-hmm. and The Blue Angel. I think I'll probably pick up. Fear and Desire is interesting. It's got some extra features that isn't going to be on the Kino. Oh, right. So, it's worth getting that <laughs> one probably. So, Kino were the ones that we saw the pictures of the restoration? Aye. Yeah. It's the same 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 version. Aye. That's good. That's Aye. Um, Yep. Cool. And some TV news. All right. I'm excited. Right. (laughs) There's a new series coming to BBC4. Horror Europa. All right. It's uh, about history of European horror. Sure. Uh, It's by Mark Gatiss. Yeah, he did did some stuff before. That history of horror series that was on a couple of years ago. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I I, I, I kept catching the odd episodes of that. Um, and like not really knowing when it was on you know, that way mm-hmm. I think it might have been when it was repeated actually so it was kind of sporadically put on 
Um, right. But I know it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, that was quite good. It's quite a sort of a personal approach. <clears throat> kind of, he was telling you about how he grew up watching Hammer mm-hmm. films and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So um, it was films he kind of liked that he put in. Mm-hmm. But um, pretty good. I think this movie is a bit narrower. So, sure. I mean, the last one was three hours and it was the history of horror. Yes. So there's no much mm-hmm. space there to work. But um, maybe I'll get more in-depth for this when, one. When is this airing, do you know? I think it's the end of the month it starts. Probably the first Aye. collection from Halloween. Oh, that's awesome. You need to give me a reminder so that I remember it's time right. to get a Watchmen. Um, we can update people mm-hmm. to what it's like. Um, <clears throat> did you see uh, Dylan for Mother was out? I did. Did you see the review? I saw it get a, quite a poor review on a Blu-ray.com. Yeah. Um, two series uh, two ringing. Aye, two and uh, a half out of five aye. for the old picture. But yeah, I saw people talking about this, how the, the discrepancies between some bad reviews on Blu-ray.com and some other sites like mm-hmm. New Beaver. Yeah. I actually noticed this a uh, lot actually recently. Like, um, I can't remember what I was looking up, but it was... I was finding like one out of fives... And then I'd find like five out of five, you know, mm. literally that mm. amount of discre- discrepancy between people. That it's, just, it, it's hard to say, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's, it's a nice rough guide to go by, but you just kind of tell sometimes. Um, I mean, like the Universal Monsters Box set mm. and some reviews there. And uh, the Wolfman was given like a kind of three, three and a half out of five because of some serious haloing. Right. I mean, I, I looked at the screenshots and I mean, I haven't, seen it yet um, but I looked at some of the screenshots and I really couldn't see necessarily what they were you know what I mean hi so I, I, I mean I'm not seeing any other reviews of that but I, I, it seems to be there's quite a lot of a wide view on different things you know mm. what I mean um, so were you seeing other reviews of it Dylan for Murder um, I think I read the, the, the Beaver one mm-hmm. and that was pretty favourable right. I believe didn't mention it right. but I did notice it quite bad in the screenshots mm-hmm. I never but, looked at screenshots for that um, I actually I'm looking at it right now and I can see. Aye. Yeah. <clears throat> but then people were talking about how they have different setups in the sense I mm-hmm. think the, the Blu-ray.com guy uses a, a projector whereas the, the maybe it's just a big TV. Yeah, and I mean, so, I think, I mean I'm not right in saying like when you're projecting like stuff, like, like HD stuff anyway, it can kind of cause those kind of artifacts sometimes. I don't know. I, I mean, obviously I don't know what yeah. the guy's set up's like, but um, I guess you'd have to have it set up well. <laughs> don't know. Um, but it'd be interesting to see. As I say, yeah, it kind of just shows you the kind of always trash reviews. Mm-hmm. Do you like that film? Uh, for Mother? Uh, I like it a lot. Yeah. No, just to only get a three for the yeah, film as well. Yeah, I that as well. So, that was a bit harsh. Yeah. I don't know. As I say, each to their own. Um, but I just thought I thought I'd mention Hitchcock. Right. <laughs> so a stable should have Hitchcock Hitchcock minute. We should have mm. like or a couple of minutes. Anyway, shall we move on to pick up since we've just waffled for half an hour? Right. <laughs> Forty minutes. Let's get them done. Right. <clears throat> I've got one. Oh, two, I've got two. Um, picked up the Universal Monsters box set. Mm-hmm. Very last minute. Uh, in fact, it was out already when I when I said to pick right. it up, um, but I just thought, fuck it, so I wanted to get that. Um, I've only watched Dracula so far, uh, but it looks really good. Mm-hmm. The Spanish version actually looks, in some scenes, a lot better. Oh, does it? Uh, it's weird because I think the Dracula was taken from a positive, oh, right. a nitrate positive. positive. Um, I don't know, it doesn't really mention much about the elements for, the, for Dracula, but actually, the opening title, music... Um, had a bit of a key change, like, uh, as if the, the it was like the original recording had fucked up a wee bit. Right. Um, and luckily it was the same music that was on the Spanish version. It was perfect. Oh, right. Okay. So they, went, they just copied the same piece of music right, yeah. kind of thing. So it's quite interesting how it's worked quite symbiotically like that. Apparently, they were saying that the Spanish version was actually better received critically at the time. Right. You know, it was lauded as a, a better made film. Oh, right. Um. Certainly, the the performances that I've seen, the bits that I've watched of it, are a, a little more emotive. Mm-hmm. You know, without it being like a span. You know, it's it's and like the kind of like the Mina character wears slightly sexier clothes. You know, a little more kind of right. Uh, what's the word? Provocative for the kind of vampire, kind of traditional vampire thing you would think of. Um, 
it's quite weird seeing it back to back. Mm, you know, aye. like kind of the same scene, the same scene, the same sets. Right, yeah. Um, the guy that plays Dracula in it looks a bit goofy though. Okay. <laughs> um, in some scenes he does look kind of like Lugosi. You know, but he's got kind of weird teeth and big ears, like aye. massive ears, and he looks a bit goofy. So he kind of ruins it a wee bit. But really nice set. Yes. Yeah. Um. You can say more about it if you want. I I also picked it up as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think it looks great. Of the design of the passion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One thing, Quam was the outer sleeves a bit thin. Yeah. Could have bulked up that cardboard, yeah. couldn't they? Definitely. Um. But overall, I mean, the book and everything's gorgeous. And, yep. Um. It's quite a nice fold out packaging. Mm-hmm. And as I say, I think the discs in the US I only had were black with just the writing on them. Right. I think from what I saw. Whereas we've got kind of like cover um, artwork on discs and they're pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I also picked up um, this documentary, which is Never Sleep Again. It's a documentary on the Nightmare on Elm Street series as a whole. It's a 240 minute documentary. All right. It's quite a wee bit length, you know, it's, um, it covers the whole series. Apparently, it's like the most, the best kind of documentary made in a horror series ever. Kind of okay. Thing. Um, is there something like that, that on the any of the Blu-rays? Because I thought there's a is it the same title with a different... Freddy thing? No, I don't think it's the same title. No, because this has only been released in DVD so far. Oh, uh, <clears throat> there is something else. There is something called like something named like that. Yeah, because it's one of three featurettes. Uh, it's not so that it's long. Not... I don't think. <clears throat> um, it may be an excerpt from it. Aye, aye. I don't know, but um, this was only made. I think this might, might have been released after the Blu-ray came out. But um, it's apparently really in-depth. I mean, there's two discs and things like that, and there's the actual... I thought the run, it said the run time was 240 minutes. I thought it was everything. That's apparently just the documentary. Oh, right. Um So it's pretty cool. Um, I haven't watched it yet, but some nice slip sleeve thing. I got the US one because the UK one didn't have the poster and stuff. The poster. I like posters, Gary. Do you ever put them up? No. Just to keep them, aye? Just keep them. Aye. It's the point in putting posters up. You stupid. <laughs> <clears throat> I used to put posters up and then they'd fall down and get ripped and shit. That's right. I want that. Aye. I, I like them where I can't see them. <laughs> I'm kidding, that's right. <laughs> um, used to imagine them. Yeah, that's it. I, I came with a lot like. Aye. You know what I mean? So, right. um, what about yourself? That's my uh, mini yep. haul. I'm back on track this week, Simon. Ah, here we go, Gary. That I've got some DVDs. Right. Just two uh, Godard titles that have been on my wish list oh, right, for uh-huh. ages. Just for special features. This is a Breathless 50th Anniversary mm-hmm. Edition from Optimum Region 2. Just as a couple of things I haven't seen. So nice. Right top. Uh, and I also got Lash and Waz, the Region 1 edition, which it's some... Um, uh, so we interview clips and stuff. Uh, turned out to be a wee bit disappointing. They're only like two minutes long each. Oh, really? Uh, uh, but um, I gambled. But, uh, I was it expensive or? Uh, it's £10 something. Uh, uh. You win some, you lose some, get uh, it. Um, also partook in the Disney 2 sure. for 1 sale. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh-huh. Uh, I got Tangled. Mm-hmm. And also got 101 Dalmatians, but that's not here yet. All right, cool. Uh, yep, that's Blu-ray, by the way. Oh, just in case he's on it. Uh, uh, and I've got some Masters of Cinema Blu-rays. I oh, you have indeed. Aye. Uh, Was there an offer on? No. Um, well, the Steelbook, I got, uh, I pre-ordered that back in July. Really? Remember that the HMV had yeah, 20% yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I ordered four Masters of Cinema Steelbooks. Mm-hmm. Um, so it came to fourteen forty each. Good. So it's yeah. a good deal. Mm-hmm. This is a testament to Dr. Mambusa. Oh, yeah, huh? Um, it's quite a nice steel book although it's one of the ones we know don't, uh, doesn't have the name of oh, the film yeah, uh-huh. which I don't like mm-hmm. did that with Cleopatra as well uh, get the name on it for sake again <laughs> you know what I mean uh, waste of space <laughs> aye it's quite a good addition it's an older transfer from 2000 I think the right. restoration but it looks pretty decent it is fairly beat up it's from different sources and stuff but uh, it looks alright it's got a commentary just but the comments is quite good. Mm-hmm. So it's not stacked, but uh, it's worth getting, I think. And I also got the two Antonioni oh, yeah. uh, Blu-rays. 
Liamiki and La Senora Senza Camellia in Italian. Uh, these are quite good. His earlier work, uh, before he really discovered his own style, but quite good. I've been getting mm -hmm. into the Master of Cinema, kind of picking up more of them. And two Criterions. Oh, sneaky. Yeah. Um, Howard's End, that's one I've been wanting for a while. Like, I didn't get it in the sale, uh -huh. but the reason I got it is there's been a bit of a, a rights issue that's come up with this. Merchant Ivory Productions, who own the, the rights, started a legal battle with Janus Films. Janus Films is the American theatrical distributor um, who distributes a lot of like older art house stuff and they kind of work with partner with Criterion. So if it gets, if Janus distributes it theatrically, it often happens that Criterion put it out on video, mm -hmm. on video. And so supposedly Janus Films have been distributing this film even though the contract's expired. Oh, right, right. So they're not happy. So I don't know what's going to happen. It might not even affect the Criterion yeah. release down the line, mm -hmm. but I wanted to pick it up just so I had it. Mm -hmm. And another Criterion, Chunking Express, which just went out of print. Oh, right. Uh, totally the blue. <laughs> yeah, I don't even like this film, really. <laughs> but it's uh, still sealed. I, I don't know. You're going to flip it, aren't you? He's going to try and pump I don't know. See, try and pump uh, the reason I wanted to buy it was so they have the option. Because I, I, I hate it. whenever a Criterion Blu-ray is going out of print, I think it's worth getting. The one that annoys me is The Man Who Fell to Earth, mm -hmm. which haven't they got? Mm -hmm. It's goes for like £100. So even even more than that, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so, don't know what I'll do with that. Just sit on it for a while, I think. I've got it if I want to own it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all I've got. That's all you've got? Ah. That's pretty good. Not bad. Oh, so I uh, and you got the universal. Oh, universal box. Yeah, you watched any of them yet? I haven't. No, no. Some pretty extensive uh, special features, yeah, and, yeah. like Frankenstein and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, like two commentaries a piece on a lot yeah, of films. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's like a ninety minute documentary by Kenneth Branagh on Frankenstein. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but it's not just on Frankenstein. It's on Frankenstein disc, but it's on all the universal universal film horror films. So. <sighs> Shall we wrap this turkey in tinfoil? Um, all I can say is, sorry. <laughs> you know. Um, You're not picking again, Simon. That's not, <laughs> hey, it served its purpose. Aye. You know what I mean? It gives a week after the serious, you know, like <laughs> newborn porn and, Aye. you know, cutting labia off or clitoris off. Um, so you know, I mean, it served its purpose. Aye, aye. yep. Gives us a wee flavour. What is it? It's cleansed the palate. Right. There you go, guy. That's like a sorbet. Done. Like a sorbet or a fine wine, right. or like some <laughs> Lambrini. <laughs> <laughs> so, I believe there's a certain time a year coming up soon, Gary, and we're going to be doing a kind of Halloween special. It's going to be a regular episode, because mm -hmm. um, the film still kind of comes under the cult films and you know outside the mainstream you maybe guess whose choice this is i'm not gonna say gary i'm not gonna say at right. all you know could be anybody's choice um but we're gonna be looking at halloween 3 which is is probably a lot of people know is one of the is the odd one out in the halloween series mm. um kind of interesting to look at i don't think you've ever seen it i've seen it was directed by Tommy Lee Wallace, who actually was the editor for Halloween. All right. Um, he also worked with Carpenter on um, Assault in Precinct 13 and Dark Star. He actually also donned the mask a couple of times in the original Halloween as Michael Myers. Yeah, so tune in. Special Halloween episode. So join us next time on Cinema Subculture. Thanks for listening and... It's not fair to use a nail. <laughs> <laughs>